Value the voice. Everybody say value the voice. My brother and my sister, there's a lot of voices. And there's a lot of voices that can come even through the Bible. You look at many churches, thousands of different of churches, different churches, and each one have their own interpretation. You have your own interpretation of the Word of God. As I'm speaking, there's 70 different translations that are heard. Why? Because you interpret it in the way that you believe you want to interpret what I'm saying. Are you with me? Even in... Uh, in England, they are busy with a with a translation of the word where they say there's not just a he and a she, there's a it and I don't know what else, a lot of stuff. And they, so they say uh, there's not just he and she, so they want to take all the he out of the Bible. That God is not God the Father and the Son. But it must be a neutral so that everybody is accommodated. Interpretation. Value the voice of God. But you need to know who is speaking to you. Because Satan can speak the word of God. The biggest temptation that Satan could bring against Jesus was speaking the word. But the voice behind the quoting of the word was Satan himself. Are you with me? So there's, there's word that you can study. But you can look at the word and Satan, is, can, Satan can help you in your Bible study. Satan can help you in your Bible. He can quote the word to you. You need to recognize the voice and then value that is the voice of God. If you don't have value and come to know his voice and that you love his voice and you appreciate his voice, you will just sometimes read your Bible. Not, not you. You guys do it always. But um, and then at the end of the day, who's going to speak? You and Satan can sit with the word. Oh, yes, we can make from stones. God, we can make bread in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yes, it's, it's a promise. Satan said to Jesus, yes, this is what can happen. And then Jesus said, it is also written because he had the perspective of what God said. Right interpretation of the gospel. Each one of you can have your own interpretation of the gospel. But at the end of the day, it is the, what is the voice behind the scripture that you hear? What is the voice behind your justification for living a compromised life? What is the voice behind you that says, oh, religion, you know, they are all that and that and that. And you have your own gospel and the voice speaking to you saying, oh, no, they just put a lot of laws on you. They're just like this. They're just like that. They are fake on a Sunday. They are like this. On a Monday, they are like that. Have your own gospel. Why are you... Must go to hell. Oops, no, no. Have your own gospel to accommodate your compromise. The gospel of the Pharisee that look at others and how wrong they are. Instead of you looking to the mirror and not be condemned, but be convinced that you must deal with certain things in your life because God has placed an amazing, amazing, amazing potential in you. Amen. He dreamt about you and he didn't have a nightmare. He had an excellent dream and then that's why you are here on earth. Amen. Tell your neighbor you're not a nightmare. Okay. Let's go with the first, first scripture. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who will judge the living and the dead in the, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Charge is like you are commanded, if you like it or not. If you have respect for the voice of God, if you have respect for the word of God, your interpretation, your own translation that you're going to form. It's not like the Amplified, the NIV, the New King James. There's a lot of translations, but the gospel according to you, that is what you hear. That is what you hear. And you make sure it's the gospel according to him when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you through the word. But it is not the gospel according to him if it's not the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Dangerous. In the presence of God. So my brother, my sister, as we sit in the presence of God, and if you understand when you, that you don't deal with the word, you don't deal, you don't receive anything if it's not in the presence of God. Because in the presence of Satan, it was the biggest temptation for Jesus on the mountain. 
do it in the presence of God. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Everybody say in season, out of season. If that is a command, then Holy Spirit will guide you to do it out of season. Out of season means it's in a time that you don't think you're supposed to speak about Jesus. But do it. In the army, some of these guys, when my nickname was Germany, Reverend or whatever, and they, some of these guys would come to me and they would tell me the most sick joke. And they would just put the sick joke out there. And I said, God, what must I do? I don't want to respond. They know what they want a certain reaction from me. So I would just make as if it was this major testimony that they told me. And I will just share the gospel. But so they will put this joke out there and they will start to laugh. And I will tell them, yes, and you know what happened? Jesus told me this other day that this and this and this. And you must just know God is so excited about you. They were just got angry and they walked away. <laughs> and they lost the whole thing. Your battle is not against flesh and blood. But even if that guy comes there, you better know in season and out of season. Like I've told 102 times here already, like that atheist that came to me every time and he said, there's no God because this, 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 this. And then I would argue with him for an hour or two. And then every time he would come to me, I'm not going to him even, he's coming to me. I was so irritated and the one time I just said, foot sack. You know, and that was such a love. I said it in love, you know. <laughs> not at all. And that night I said, God, I'm giving up. Oh, then Cornelius stood out of the way so that God can work. Hello, are you with me? And then when he came again, I just shared God's heart to him. And later, later, this atheist, he was like one of the main atheists of about 13, 15 of them. When he said, well, because of this reason, there's no God. Then all the rest, they say the same. So later when he gave his life to Christ and some demon came out and he was saved and he just told all the rest. It was the devil that told me all that rubbish and then suddenly all the atheists were quiet. And he told me once, many times that I would come to you. I came because I want what you have. But when I come to you, I don't know how to say it because I've never learned how to share what's inside. So when I come to you, I will just say, there is no God. But actually, his heart is crying out. But his words is, there's no God. Oh, that was an eye-opener for me. That was such an eye-opener for me. That from then, when people would come and they just tune you with something that is like they want to push you. Hello? I would just start to share the gospel. I would just, this one guy wanted to beat me up and he was like, there. And I said, you are so precious to God. And while he was shaking, I, I was shocked. While he was shaking, tears started to fall. Guys, uh, in season, out of season, preach the word. Amen. Where are we? Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct. Rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Our problem is we correct and rebuke when we many times are frustrated or angry. Don't ask my son. Okay. I never did it like that. Um, okay, that's a lie. Okay. What am I saying? Even in the rebuke. If the word does not, if there's not a rebuke in your life, if you don't hear the word and then you say, I have to change certain things. If you don't hear the word and you realize, ouch, I'm going to, God help me, I will do it this way. If you don't hear the word and change in it, it's not you and Holy Spirit. There's not a value to the voice of God in your life. But if there's a value to the voice of God through his word, there will be correction, there will be encouragement, there will be rebuke, there will be discipline, there will be a changing in your life, there will be an interaction in this relating with the word because Holy Spirit is opening up. When you busy with the word, it's the voice of God that is opened up to you. But demons will speak. If you don't allow the voice of God, demons will speak. Now, who of you open the word of God and says, Satan, please speak to me through the word of God. 
Nobody will be so stupid. No, but unfortunately we are caught by the enemy <laughs> in the past. Never again. In Jesus' name. Because when you open up the word and you don't allow the Holy Spirit, and you say, Holy Spirit, open it up for me. You come with expectation. You come because you choose to love the world, the word, and respect the word. If you struggle with the word, if you struggle in your relationship, if you struggle to understand love and this and this, at least start with, I choose to respect the word. You with me? Even Satan respect the word of the king. If the king tells Satan, go, then he goes. Now, if Satan respect the word, how much more is supposed to be me and you? Are, are, are you with me? Him because of fear, we because of love. Let the love drive out the fear. That you don't respect the word like in the way that the devil respect the word, out of fear. But you respect the word because you love God and you love his word and he loves you. And in the love relationship, you value the voice of the one who gave everything to you. But if you don't choose the voice of God through the word, automatically that is the way it's going to happen. You will have the voice of demons. The devil will speak to you through the word. While you are sitting here, either Holy Spirit or the devil is speaking to you. But devil will be very awake when you hear the word. Because he must make sure you don't take it in your heart. If you want to know when is the devil awake and not sleeping with you. It is when you open the word. Because he must make sure you mustn't take the word. Because with the word of God he needs to flee. If the word is alive in you he has, cannot touch you. The devil has nothing on you. He cannot touch you. Because he cannot touch the living word. Are you with me? So his biggest enemy is he must make sure that the word is not alive in you. <sighs> That's why I saw in Kriari it's freaky. If I must say it like that, but it's actually making sense. Some guys they can study and they can do exam with a lot of subjects, but when they need to study word, they cannot study it. It's not getting in. And they struggle struggle with the exam. And then you pray for them to be delivered from sometimes demons. And then suddenly they can study the word. Why can you watch certain movies? Why can you read certain books? But when you get into the word, it's a struggle to focus. It's a struggle. Then, then suddenly you are tired. Then suddenly you are sleepy. Then suddenly, because there's other voices speaking while we busy with the word. Instead of only the Holy Spirit. Value the voice of God so that you have a gospel that is according to Jesus Christ. Amen. Correct, rebuke, encourage. Great. Go on. Let's go on. Four, why is this necessary? Guys, because we are getting serious, seriously in a time where hell is serious to vomit a lot of rubbish in every nation. And it's going to happen. For the time will come. It will come. It's not from hell, but God said it will come because it must create a fire to purify the church. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Sound doctrine, what, what is sound doctrine again? Where there's rebuke, correction, discipline, encouragement, enlightenment, change, freedom, all of that in the whole package. If you're not busy with the word somewhere and where, whatever church you are, or with the word you alone and with somebody speaking into your life, and that interaction does not happen, then you are in this place of, you don't put up with sound doctrine. You don't want the word of God in a healthy way to bring health to your life. Sound doctrine. Instead, why? To suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Myths. The other word for myths is rubbish. A um, lot of nonsense. He's talking about a lot of nonsense. Because when you have an issue, the word must adapt to what you want. Your ear will hear the word according to how you want to hear it. 
Are you with me? That's going to happen more and more and more. Because the guy, when as soon as you turn away, you are in deception. The biggest, biggest, biggest sign in the end time. Not 666 and the control from the Antichrist. But the biggest sign is the deception of the church. And if the church guys are not deceived, the devil has no authority to take control. But only if the guys that are deceived, only when the church go into deception, will, the, will hell have authority. More and more on earth and in the nations. Hell can only speak, oh, hell can only have the voice if the church don't have a voice. But if the church value the voice and if the church know how to speak in the nation, speak into Blue Fontaine, speak into the education system, then your children will not learn, uh, granny's granny's granny was a baboon. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody goes like, oh, 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 you know? That's your granny's granny's granny. Oh, oh, oh. Your child must learn it, remember, at school. Because we were not made in his image. Evolution. We came from the baboon. Because a lot of rubbish. But, but it's okay. That's the voices to our children that must happen. Because the church don't have a voice. It's only, they only have authority because the church gave them the authority. Because God gave the church the authority. In the midst of the storm, oh, I'm going inside. In the midst of the storm, the guys in the boat, Jesus is getting into the boat. Hallelujah. No, that was not his plan. The word says Jesus wanted to pass them, walking on the water, pass them. And they are in the boat going through the storm. Jesus knew the storm was there. But God believed. Jesus believed that you will use the authority over the storm. That you will speak to the storm in the name of Jesus. Speak to your storm. Speak to your storm. The voice that he has placed in you through the word. You have the voice of God. When God said he took words and he said he didn't create from nothing something. He took words and he said let there be light. And there was light. <laughs> light is the result of the word of God. Stars, the word of God. That awesome nature out there is because of the word of God. That what is beautiful out there is because of the word of God. God didn't create something from nothing. God took the word. And then that powerful, powerful word that created heaven and earth, he put in you. And if you understand the voice that is inside of you, you will create a world with the word of God. Go into all the world. Make disciples of all the nations. Where you go, things need to change. The world that God hates must change into the world that God loves. He loved the world and for that world he gave his life. He hates a certain world. He said, turn away from that world and that worldly systems. You go into that place and you bring down on earth as it is in heaven. As this university, you dreamt about this free state university. As you dreamt about this university, Lord, in heaven. Let it be on earth in this university as it is in heaven. The young people in this place, the young people in the free state, the young people in this nation. Let it be on earth as you dreamt about them. As you dreamt about this new generation. God, let it be on earth. And through your prayer, open up the heavens. To be on earth as it is in it. But, but it will not if the church don't value the voice and understand the, and respect the voice of God. And no, the voice of God is powerful. Everything can happen. Everything it can be disaster. It can be chaos. It can be chaos. It can be chaos. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. And there was, it, it was net dirmakar. <laughs> And everything in the Spirit of God is waiting. The Spirit of God is hovering over you. He's hovering over Blue Fountain. He's hovering over your family. He's hovering over your parents, your children, your brothers, your sisters. He's hovering there. Until what? Then God said. But he will speak through somebody. Not just quote a scripture like Satan quote a scripture. But when the voice is coming into that place. Then God said. And there was light. Come on, man. 
value his voice, respect his voice through his word. And don't touch the word if you don't do it with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Gather around them great number of teachers that will... Eh, there's many people, unfortunately. You know, then they're in this church, then they're like this, then they go there, then they go... And they go where they like it the most. Eh, I've seen that. I told you guys, I've seen that in the past. Then the youth pastor, you know, this youth pastor, he's very handsome and he's very there. And there's a lot of people. And then he gets married and then a third of all the ladies go to a different church. They believe God sent them to a different church. Ah, oh, come on. Are you with me? No, man. You're in a place because God said you must be there. If you like it or not, if the pastor is not so glamorous or whatever, or if the worship is not, you're in a place because God has placed you there. And that's it. Make sure you know the voice. And if you are here, you are here because of the voice of God that led you here. And nothing else. Amen. All right, let it be so. Next one. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We talked about that. But if you have the right gospel, if you don't have the right gospel, if you don't allow Holy Spirit to prepare this word to be the bread that you eat, some other hocha, some other demon will prepare the word and it will make you sick, man. The word of God will make you sick if you don't do it through the Holy Spirit. Because Satan will prepare the word. He's ready to prepare the word for you. So that you are discouraged, so that you are condemned, so that you feel miserable, you feel irritated when you read the word, you feel condemned, or you feel uh, just, you must be on performance, you're supposed to read, you are tired, and all those stuff is, is that other spirits making sure that this does not come alive to you. No, you will value the voice of God. No, 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 no. And he will prepare them for you. So the, then Sasko Sam in Kentucky, you know about them, they came from heaven. The Israelites, they got the manna and the quails. You remember? So here comes the bread, you know. And if you want to find security for the future, you must put all this bread and keep it safe for tomorrow, for the sake of tomorrow. And those who keep it for tomorrow, it's rotten. It's rotten. It's rotten. You should live not on yesterday's bread. Not on yesterday's bread. But every day you need the bread of life. That doesn't mean if tomorrow you forgot to read the word, oh, your life is in a chaos. No, 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 no. But your heart's attitude is become faithful. Become faithful with the word of God. Amen? Because the guys who kept the manna and ate it the next day, they really became sick. So live on yesterday's word. Today you become sick because it's not God's pattern. Why every day our daily bread? Because God says every day be dependent on me. Be dependent on me. Walk with me. Walk with me. I want you to be dependent on me because I want to give. Not just God wants what's the good word he doesn't always want to be nasty or anything but he wants you to see his goodness he wants you to see what is him as a father what is he doing as a father what is how does he want to reveal himself as a father to you you can have all the goodies man every time israel had all the goodies they walked away from god Every time they had all the goodies, they walked away from God. And they must, God must take away the goodies so that their heart will cry out. Not punishment, but he's jealous for their love. He's jealous for your love. Give your life to him. Amen. Live from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And let God prepare. Let God prepare the table. He prepared the table in front of you, across your enemies. Enemies, because why the battle belongs to the Lord. He says, have a feast. Have a feast with my word and see how I defeat your enemies. Let me prepare the table with my word for you and eat my word. And as you have a feast in eating my word, you will see how I defeat your enemies. Psalm 23. Amen. Next one. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears and listens to and heeds my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and I will eat with him and he will eat with me. We will have a feast. God desires intimacy. But intimacy from the word of God, intimacy in your life will happen either with God or with demons. The one or the other. There's not a third party. He's God or the devil. Are you with me? So somebody will be knocking at your door. And there will be a knocking at the door of your heart, at the door of your emotions, the door of your intellect, the door of your reasoning, the door of your relationships. There will be a a knocking. And when you open the door because of a knock, the rubbish will come in. But there's one door that you will open if you recognize not the knock, but you recognize the voice on the other side of the door. 12 o'clock in the night, 1 o'clock in the night, there's a knock at the door. What do you do if all brain cells are gone? You just open the door. But if there's three brain cells working, you will ask, who is there? Uh, not true? Are you still here? So you better keep those doors locked when temptation when rejection, when fear, when anxiety, when stress, when negativity, when judgment, when unforgiveness is knocking at you. You don't open a door. You're not some rubbish house. Tell your neighbor, he's not a gemors house. Okay. Okay. So if you are precious, hey, if you are a precious palace for the king, let's say I'm a precious palace for the king. Amen. Then you open only for the king. Because it's his house. It's his palace. I stand at the door and I knock. Unfortunately, there's other people knocking also. All those demons of rejection and this chamorse and that, 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 that. And the world is knocking. And that guy's opinion is knocking. And what that person said to you. And that person that hurt you. And all those stuffies are knocking somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere knocking. He says, if you uh, heeds my voice, that heeds has to do, it's not just here. It has to do when you recognize my voice. But you cannot recognize his voice if you don't know his language. If you don't know the way that he talks. If you don't understand the certain language that he has. If you don't understand the language, how can you recognize his voice? If you don't value his voice, if you don't ask Holy Spirit to open up the voice of God to you through the word of God so that you can see when heaven wants to have intimacy with you. He does not just enter your house because there's no cheap intimacy. There's no forced intimacy. That is called different words that I don't want to mention here. There's something like prostitution, and that is for, for cheap, whatever, just do that, da, 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 and gone. There's some cheap rubbish when you just go and have and go carfuffle with a lady or with a guy, but you're not even married. Make intimacy cheap, man. Whatever is knocking at your door. But, but that guy is knocking with a demon. He's knocking with a demon at your house because he thinks you are trash, man. He said, I love you. You just beat him up in love. Beat him up in love. Okay. (laughs) No. You are a precious palace for the king. And if that king says, that guy, I don't allow him close to you. You tell him, go, 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 go. Make right with your king, Jesus Christ. I belong to a husband and his name is Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ, if he does not give you to that man... And that man doesn't respect Christ. He will not respect you. He will not respect you if he does not respect Christ. Are you with me? So intimacy, even from God's side to you, is he's waiting for your response. He's waiting for you to invite him in because he will have no cheap intimacy with you. Are you with me? 
come to know his voice so that you can recognize the voice on the other side of the closed door. Okay, there we go. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. They know me. Ah, I know them. Oh, this scripture we're talking about, they know me. So there's a heart-to-heart -heart connection. There's a heart-to-heart -heart connection. And then you can know his voice. The, now the other one is for intimacy. The previous one is for his one to provide for you. You will live from every, every word, from the mouth of God. God wants to provide for you, but you must understand his voice to understand his provision. You need to understand his voice to understand intimacy. You need to understand his voice to follow him. That means your strategy. Your strategy is where Christ is, that's your strategy. But, ah, Lord... I hear the voice in the valley of the shadow of death. No, 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 it cannot be God. I just hear the voice of God that is leading to the grass that's good, to the still waters, to the wonderful this and this. I'm trusting him and I'm waiting for his voice in that green pastures. But the devil wants to draw me into the valley of the shadow of death. If that is where you must go now, you go. But you will go through. You will go through. So sometimes you're going in a situation and you don't know what is happening in your life. If you value the voice, if you come to know the voice, and he's leading you into a place where you think, it's, this is the valley or the shadow of death. You follow the voice into that valley. Because that voice will take you through. And on the other side, you will stand and say, and say wow, what an awesome God. I don't fear any form of darkness. Any fear, I don't fear any form of death. Because life spoke to me in the darkness. The voice of life was there. The light, the voice of the light was there in the midst of the valley of darkness. And you come out with a testimony. Ah, let's not try to manipulate his voice. And just come and help me. For I trust you for the green pastures. I trust you for this provision. First hear from God, are you, are you doing the right thing? Are you studying the right thing? Are you in the right place? Do you, your dream really from God? Go and sit with him. Amen. Are you with me? Come to know his voice. God believe you will know his voice. He's created you in such a way that you will know his voice. Light, creation, know his voice. That's why creation is there. They understood all the vastness of chaos of the universe understood when God spoke and immediately responded. In a split of a second, just suddenly, multi, 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 I don't know how you want to call it, of waters separate from earth, from the dry land, and it's just there. And God has marked where is the border between land and sea. Just this little bit of a shaking, and it's a tsunami and 2 million, 10 million, 50 million people will be dead. But he's keeping everything like this. How? With his word. With his word. There's order in the universe because of his word. There's chaos in our lives because it's not always the word of God. It's not always the word of God. It's supposed to be the word of God. And then the chaos will be gone and there will be order. The order of heaven will be in your thoughts. The order of heaven will be in your hearts, in your relationships, in your future, in your provision. The order of heaven will be there if you respect the voice. Next one. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to man, where are you? Just so by the way, God was not confused that he didn't know where they were. He knew exactly where they were. <laughs> but he wants you to come out to him. Come to God and he will come to you, the word says. He knew exactly. Adam, where are you? Uh, Lord, are you confused? Do you not know where I am? <laughs> he knows where you are. He knows. <laughs> okay. But he's calling you out of that place. Out of that place. To do what? To walk with him. He was walking in the garden. He wants you to walk with him. We talked about this many times. The walk with God is not cheap. 
Walk with him. Oh, he will be with you like the shadow. He will never leave you, never forsake you. But he will not necessarily walk with you and you will not necessarily walk with him if you are hiding this in your life, hiding that, hiding this, hiding that. Because if you hear the voice and you only react on other voices, the voice of the snake, the voice of the other, you will be afraid of his voice. You're not comfortable when I speak, when somebody's speaking the word. You're not comfortable when you read the word. You don't know what to do with the word. It's comfortable just chilling out. So you can sit here and you are hiding behind your bush. How? Don't let the word touch you. Don't let the word touch you. Don't come into the place where you stand face to face with God through the word and that he speak to you and bring correction, discipline, encouragement and change. But hide behind your bush, whatever you call it. Justification, personality, this, that, whatever. Oh, no, man. Yes, you will go to heaven. There was no walking with God on earth for eternity. You will know that. Because in the walk, there's no cheap walk. Walking with God is, I walk where he walks. I walk in the same pace as he walks. I stop where he stops. I, my heart is with his heart. We're looking at the same, in the same way to the same things. Okay, that will take a lifestyle to get into that. And even when we die, we will not be perfect in that. But still God has a desire for this fellowship, not just sitting with you and eating after knocking and hearing his voice, but also walking. Yeah. So you have your time with God, but when you work out there and you study and you are getting into pick and pay and wherever, you are supposed to walk with God. Are you with me? Who bought a banana and told somebody, I'm not, you're not an ape. You were made in the image of God. Anybody? I told you guys 72 times to do that. Nobody. Nobody. Thanks. You would have gotten, gotten a thousand rand. Don't tell me next week. Now it's, then it's for the money. Uh-uh. I'm serious, you would have gotten a thousand rand. Okay. God is calling you. You know where you are. He's calling you out of that. He said, walk with me. Come and walk with me. Amen. Abram walked with God, so he was the new order. Noah walked with God. That's why everybody forsake and only he and his family went through. Uh, Enoch walked with God and then he didn't even die. He just walked into heaven. From earth into heaven. The word says he never died. He just walked into heaven. Hello, walk with him. I mean, next one. He answered, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. I heard your voice. You will hear God's voice. You hear God's voice. But do you value the voice? Do you respond accurately to the voice of God? Even as you sit here. You hide from the voice of God as you sit here if you allow the other voices to push away. I heard the voice, but there was a voice telling me, you feel ashamed, go and hide yourself. And the issue was not the hiding, the issue was I allowed the other voice to tell me, go and hide yourself. I was hidden from God because I heard his voice. Issue is with what voice you will respond to. Next one. We're going nearly for a landing. Life and death in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Look at that. Oh, the principle, the principle is there. That's why you find very professional guys with very grand books and intellectual books of positive thinking and positive speaking. Because it's a, it's a godly principle. But the difference between you and that excellent book that sold, I don't know, 300 million copies. Whoa. Excellent book about positive thinking. The difference is things can change around that person, but Christ is not in the center of it all. But with the life and death that is from the word of God, when you speak the life that is from the word, in the center of your emotions, Christ will be there. In the center of that challenge, Christ will be. In the center of your business, in your relationship, Christ will be there. The king of the universe will be in your Positive speaking. 
Not some changing of circumstance because God laid down a principle and it can even work in the world. It can work in the world. We did it. I saw it on the YouTube. Don't believe everything YouTube is saying. Here with me. YouTube, I tube, we all tube, but no. There's a lot of wrong tubes. <laughs> what I'm saying at the end of the day, you take an apple. Go and do that. I want to hear who did it. Come and show us the apple. Cut the apple in half. Put the one apple in a bucket or something. Other app, half apple in a bucket or something. And then you open the, the one every day, two times. And you don't curse, don't swear. Just talk, you're a piece of rubbish. You are nothing. You, not, you don't deserve anything. You are just hamors. But just speak things like that. No swearing. And then you close it. And then this one, you open, you say, you are lovely, you are wonderful, you are flourished, you are precious, you are this, you, you speak to the half an apple. You close it. Give yourself two weeks. I didn't believe it, but the, then me, my wife and kids, we did it. The one apple was a little bit, what's that word? Uh, uh, beige. Yeah, a little bit beige. The other one, Became rotten, made rotten parts in that piece of apple. Words, in words, there's life and death. Ah, you won't. Do ah, go and do that. Go and see then on YouTube. If you don't believe, I can see you forming what other voices now in your head. Yeah. <laughs> go and try it. I give you. I. You can take two pieces of bread even. You will see. The one will be really chamath. What's math in English? Mold, molded. The one will be very molded. The other one will not stay the same. It will become stale, but it will not have all this chamor's math mold in it. You won't believe this, man. Come on. Go and do that. Don't look at me like. <laughs> yeah. Go and do that. Come and show us. Bring it. Bring it. Okay, power, life, and death. You speak the life of God. Amen. Then you speak like he's speaking. All right, next one. I think this is the last one. Not everyone who says to me. Everybody say, says to me. He's not the one that's saying, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Does the will. Good works God has prepared for you. Dead works is your own ideas. You are speaking your very smart ideas, but it's your voice, your voice, your voice, and your good idea. You're doing this for the Lord, but who said God wanted you to do that? You can sit here, but and you have a voice, but it's not necessarily God. But when you go out there, what, here now, today, well, what's going to change? What are you going to do differently? But God's word goes with obedience. If you respect his word, if you love him, you'll obey him. If you love him, you'll obey him. If you respect him, you'll obey him. Because you love him and you worship him. Amen. So obedience and his word goes together. And for those guys, he says, I know you. I know you because we did it together. For the one who had a very smart idea, even can quote the word, but he wasn't with God. God says, I don't know you. I don't know you. Let's go on. That guy. Many will say on that day, Lord, we have, have we not prophesied in your name, in the name of Jesus? We have driven out demons in your name, in the name of Jesus. We did many mighty works in your name. Oh, think of a guy. Yeah, he's walking and, and he's looking at, I can point, point now to somebody and to somebody and say, demon, get out in Jesus' name. Boom, demon. What are you going to think of that guy? Hey, that's a man of authority. Oh, he's walking with the Lord. And the other guy, and there's mighty miracles happening and all this stuff happening. Ah, there can be an anointing. There can be, hello, a lot of things happening because God's principles work. God's principles work. But did they, do you have a relationship with God? Are you walking with him? Are you with me? What is this saying? Oh, you give your life to Christ, but you, you must do all these works. Otherwise, still you're not going to go to heaven. No, no, no. 
by the fruit you will know the tree. If you really gave your life to Christ, there will be good fruit that coming forth. And that is works because you know him. Because you know him. You know his voice from his will. How do you know the will of God? Because you heard his voice through his word. That's the only way you can know his will. Is if you know his voice and you know his voice through his word. Let's say, I know his will. If I know his voice, if I know the word. We've done all this stuff, Lord. Next one. And then I will say to them, openly, 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 publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who act wickedly, disregard my commands. We can each one have our own translation. Are you with me? But you better make sure it's the one that Holy Spirit opens up to you. So what does it say? I never knew you. Disregard my commands. Who is that? Who is disregarding God's commands? The guys that can do a lot of miracles. Because in the end time, a lot of people will do, be able to do a lot of miracles. A lot of miracles. Are you with me? A lot of people will be deceived. Why? Because they cannot recognize the voice in the midst of the miracle. They let the miracle say to them, yes, this is the Lord. Yes, this is the Lord. Look at that guy. He prayed once and there's just this provision. Hell can also provide for you. Hell can open many doors for you. Oh, I give you the kingdoms of this world. I give you everything. Jesus, I provide for you according to the will of God. God's will is that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. So here I am, Satan, and I, me as Satan, I'm saying, I give to you the kingdoms of this world. Just focus a little bit more on me than on your father. That's called worship. Just focus a little bit more on this than on God. And, and hell will give you kingdoms. Focus more on your what you can do and your own talents and your own ideas and your own this oh man that sounds like whoa we are all doomed no 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 thanks for God's grace that we can grow in this amen you can grow in this I can grow in this true hey are you asleep already don't listen to that voice <laughs> okay what am I saying may God help you may God help me let me understand so that we can see more and more what God has for us. That we will not act wickedly. It is wicked. It is wicked to just read the word and think I'm going on, I'm a Christian, but I don't respond to his voice with obedience. That's wickedness. That sounds freaky, but it's wickedness according to the word. We're going to change that. So tomorrow, today, this afternoon, to. You make sure that in what you do, when you do it, the voice of God is still clear. You're getting into an interview for a job. And the guy says, this is this, and this is the salary, is uh, 40,000 rand, and blah, 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 all this stuff. And you're, whoa, what is the voice of God saying? What is the voice of God saying? Are you here? Because maybe the voice of God is saying, no. And then you need to respond to the, that voice that says no. And you will see and you will stand amazed at what God will do in and through you. So tomorrow, learn this thing. Learn this thing where God says, I don't know you. I don't see you. I'm not walking with you into that job. I don't know you in that relationship. This is not the way you're supposed to be. Did you ever tell somebody, this is not you? When that person threw this major tantrum or lied or did this or did that, hey, and you tell the guy, but this is not you. I know, don't know you in this way. Even sometimes with yourself, maybe it happened with me. I cannot believe this, but this is not me. Why did I do even that? Why did I say that? Why did I act in that way? This is not me. Are you with me? So come to know the real you that's walking with God. Where God says, I know that one. I know the one. I know the true you. And walk with the true of who you are with that, with that person. Walk with God. And get rid of the other chamors. Where that demon of rejection says, I know you. 
compromise is, I know you. That vulgar gemors, sexual compromise, I know you. That pride, I know you, and you know me, and we walk together. But there's no future in that. No, today we decide. Today we decide through the blood of Christ to get rid of that rubbish. Tomorrow through the blood of Christ is a new day. Through the blood you, resp you forgive yourself, you forgive those other people. Because why? Because they ask for forgiveness. No, because you respect the blood. That's why you forgive them. That's why you forgive yourself. That you stand before God for a new opportunity. Let's say through the blood of Jesus. There's a new opportunity. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's just bow the heads. God, thank you that we can be for you. We can come before you. Lord, and I pray that everyone that is here will hear your spirit. If you're sitting here today and you know I need to make right with the Lord, I need to come back to him. I heard his voice and I need to come back to him. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Just raise your hand and I want to pray for you, please. See those hands? God, I pray for every man and woman reaching out to you right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. And I pray that you will touch them. Let's pray with them. Lord, here I am. I surrender my life to you. Forgive me my sin. Forgive me my shame. Please receive me. I accept you as Lord and Savior. Jesus, come and live in my life. Forgive me my sin through your blood. Thank you that I can enter your kingdom and be your child. Even as a prodigal child, I come back to you today. Thank you that I hear your voice calling me by name. And you are saying, welcome home. Thank you that you will never leave me, never forsake me. Satan, you lose me. I will deal with the voices. I will value only your voice, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.